yeah, brother, I was thinking today is the Thanksgiving uh, day in, in the US. Oh, okay. In order to be appropriate, we also give thanks. Sure. Yeah, and uh, so dear friends, I thought it would be good to be all together, uh, you know, join in this uh, prayer as a thanksgiving to the Lord for this. Almost last one year, we've been having this time of uh, daily Bible study and daily rosary. God has really blessed us. And let's uh, thank God today for this uh, beautiful blessing. He's been giving us day after day, wonderful speakers and a very, very powerful and anointed uh, deep word of God sharing we've been having. So let's pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father God, we want to thank you this day. Special thanks for you to you for this uh, beautiful gift you've given us of this daily Bible study. Over the last so many months, every day, day in, day out, we brought so many beautiful speakers and we've covered in depth different aspects of the Bible, different aspects of our Catholic faith. And we have been enriched so much and lots of us have uh, really been transformed in our, in our walk with you, in our discipleship with you, Lord. We want to thank you especially for this grace you've given us. And we want to be, uh, uh, we, we want to ask today, ask you the grace that we apply all of these in our lives so that we grow in intimacy with you, so that, so that we can be doers of the world and be, be pleasing to you in all that we do. And dear friends, at this moment, I want to create each of us in silence to think of three things in our life that we are deeply thankful for. And often we forget to give thanks to the Lord. The Lord asked the uh, single leper who came back to him, where were the other ten, nine? Didn't they get healed? So today let us not be like the others who do not give thanks. Let us give thanks silently for just recall three things in your life that you're deeply thankful for. And let us thank God from the bottom of our hearts. Amen. 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 Thank you. Over to you, brother. Yes, Jude. Jude, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think you can spotlight both of us, Jude. That'll be better. Right. So. I'll do it. Uh... Not able to see both. No, no, don't worry. Then we'll just carry on. Yeah, okay? just carry on. Not an issue. We'll just carry on. Okay. So, my dear friends, we um, started with John chapter 15 yesterday. Especially this chapter talks about the relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and we, the people. And how Jesus using the imagery of the wine and the branches and the wine grower to make us understand this. So as a quick recap, we will see what we saw yesterday, how we saw Jesus was a true wine. And we saw the foreshadowing of the blessings in the Old Testament, where Joseph was the type of Christ. He has wine in his blessing. And we also know Judah, who received the blessing, also has wine in his blessing. So when we talk about Judah, the blessing is coming upon the fourth son of Jacob, Israel, that is Judah. And Joseph is the one who inherits the birthright and the um, inheritance. He gets the inheritance also, double the portion of the inheritance. Now, Joseph is the type of Jesus Christ and Jesus is born in the tribe of Judah. So from that we saw, especially when we read Genesis 49, we see how, what was foreshadowing of the blessing in Joseph and in Judah, the wine blessing actually. That is seen as a fulfillment in the life of Jesus Christ, especially when he refers to him as the true wine in John chapter 15. Okay, and just a few things he says. Through his son, Joseph received double the portion of the inheritance of the promised land. We read that in Genesis 48, 22. Now, Jesus is also, is the 
inheriting the birthright and through his birthright he is also receiving a double portion of inheritance for us a kingdom in this world the catholic church and the kingdom in eternal life too and how in union with him we have access to these two things because he becomes the first born the birthright is with him first born all the blessings are in him and in union with him how we have access to all that that's what we saw about the vine and the branches especially these aspects we saw now let's move on from there now today what we have to learn i also told you about the old testament reference of the vine and the vine grower when we read isaiah 5 here god is represented as the vine grower and the people of israel as the vine but they became a fruitless vine they did not bear good fruit therefore now what god is doing he still remains the vine grower but he has made jesus as the true vine and we as only the branches since we the people could not bear good fruit he sent his only son and through in union with him we will be able to produce good fruits that's what a quick recap of what we saw yesterday okay with this we move on to um what we had to learn today i think we need to start from verses 8 onwards and right so 7 i think 7 okay fine let's read from 7 then yeah was a 7 If you abide in me and my words abide in you ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. There's a beautiful statement here which we also saw in John chapter 14 also asking what do we want in the name of Jesus Christ. But we saw the two major conditions applied to it. One was to keep the commandments and the second one is to ask according to the will of God. We saw that. Now Jesus says when we abide in him ask for whatever we wish jude if we abide in jesus christ let me tell you we will not ask for anything because all that we need is already in jesus christ it's a very tricky statement from jesus christ i would say mm-hmm. i say tricky i'm not saying it's a very cunning statement it's it's a deep hidden message because everything that we genuinely need is already in jesus christ remember we read ephesians 1 3 yesterday how all the blessings are in christ in the heavenly places spiritual realm so whatever you and i need is already in christ so if i abide in him there is not going to be anything that i'm going to ask further because all my needs will be met that's why i remember in matthew 6:33 jesus said seek ye first the kingdom of god and all these things will be added on to you that's what it means when i unite myself to the kingdom of god that is jesus christ every other need will be added on to it therefore there will not be any need for me to ask for anything very important to know that there will not be any need for me to ask for anything ask for anything in that that's something very beautiful to we need to understand that okay let's move on further with that corollary is if i ask something then i don't truly abide in jesus um it not necessarily see um when we, there could be two kinds of asking you can ask for something that you actually don't need right then you can then if you really ask for something that you need that means probably you are not fully united to christ so it works both ways also we need to be very clear on that aspect very important to know these things very important to know these things okay now john chapter 15 was 8 and to 10 my father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples therefore today when you read verses 8 my father is glorified that we bear much fruit and become his disciples therefore one of the criteria of a disciple of jesus christ is to always produce fruit always always remember we already meditated on the fig tree cursing of the fig tree right right where one of the things that i was highlighted what we learned is that in the end times after the uh, resurrection of jesus christ there is no season or time to produce fruit we have to be fruitful always always 
The reason for that is the Holy Spirit is abiding in you and me. So I cannot be selective in producing fruits. Yes, yes. I cannot say, okay, the situation is not favorable. People are not ready to receive the fruit. So I will not, we cannot choose and pick the time or the place where we want to produce fruit because it is the Holy Spirit that is producing all the fruits and he's abiding in you and me. Right. Then he goes on to say, as the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. It's a very uh, straightforward statement here, which we also saw earlier in John chapter 14. Keeping the commandments is the way that we love God. So I, I loving the, God... Yeah, sorry. Is, I, go is, is, complete your thought. Bro. No, no, you can, you can say. No, no, no. I, I was just looking at the uh, Didache Bible here and one of the uh, commentaries they say about um, uh, before Jesus talked about... Um, you know, spreading the, the gospel mm. across the world. He talked about how we need to bear fruit, how we need, need to be always uh, abiding in his commandments. Mm. And uh, the corollary was that he said, first you become a saint and then you spread, or first you, you strive for saintliness. Mm. And uh, through that, you spread the good news. Uh, yeah, that's and, very uh, important, Jude. The reason for that is more than what people hear us, they see us. Yes. They value not what we say. They value how we live more. Yes. Especially in today's generation, it's easy for us to go and reproduce a lot of talks because so much is available everywhere. Yes. I can be a good orator, pick up some stuff from the internet or pick up something from the other's talk, make my own talk. It's all possible. And I can even you know, reproduce it in a better way than the original person spoke. Yes, yes. But then people are also looking at my life. And that's why I said, no, we have to live the... Uh, uh, Francis, uh, Francis said, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, we know the statement. Yes. Preach always, speak only when necessary. Yes. So preaching is more our own life itself. That's very important. And that's why the keeping the commandments become fundamental for us. And it's it's a very fundamental home. thing. I was saying that begins at home. It begins everywhere. Jude. It's there everywhere. <laughs> and I cannot say it begins at home. It's, 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 it should be our nature. Yes, absolutely. Following the commandments should be our nature. Especially when we talk about the you know, first commandment. Very important. Yeah. First, the two commandments, I would say, because um, other things we can always attach to the nature of the flesh and emotions. But the first two commandments actually come from within us. Yeah, it has to be our in inner nature. Yes, yes. Not that the other commandments are less important. What I'm saying is many things are uh, determined by the first two commandments, actually. Yes, yes. And maybe we can study the commandments one of these days and see how it goes. Probably, especially, especially the first commandment. Yes, first commandments. And different people will bring out different, different points in that. Yes. So it's worthwhile to listen to through two, three people on that. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on now. Now, verses 11 and 12, it's something very interesting here. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Now, um, Jude, let me go back a few verses now before. Seven. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. When this abiding happens, we in Jesus Christ and I, Jesus in me, there is the fruit that will be produced. As we saw in verses eight and ten. By this you will know that you bear much fruit. See, let's connect these things 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 together, 11 and 12 together. Let's for a moment think about it. We abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. As a result, we produce fruits. Fruit. Yeah. fruit. What is the fruit that will be seen in us? That's what is going to be listed here. First thing I say is joy will be completed. 
So we'll have a, a holistic, complete joy in us. When we say joy, it is not relating to happiness. Right. Happiness is something that comes from outside. Joy is something that comes from within us, within us. And that's the first fruit. Okay, when we say fruit, yes, love is there. But this joy will manifest in us. That's a sign of it. Right, right. And Jesus said, joy will be complete. That means what? That means he says, there will be a real rejoicing within us. Right. And then he right. goes on to say, this is my commandment that you love one another as I love you. Okay, uh, Jude, let's, let's come to this now. I asked you this uh, question yesterday. Why did Jesus use the imagery of a, a vine and the grapes rather than a fig or a, um, what's the other fruit is it? Fig or a? Olive, olive. Olive, okay. Those are the three common ones. Fig or an olive. olive. Okay. What is the reason for that? There's an answer here for that. Okay. Let me go back to the picture of that. Okay. I'll come back to this now. Okay. Uh, friends, can you see the picture on the screen now? Yes. Now, we know the father is the wine grower too. Okay? Yes. So we, cannot, we cannot see him in the picture. Jesus is the wine, the plant itself as we call it. Yes? Yes. And we are the branches with the fruit. Okay? Right. Now, what is the speciality of grapes? Compared to your olives or your fig? I think there's a lot of fruit on each branch. Together. Together, yes. Togetherness. Have you ever seen a grape, single grape? Yeah. <laughs> it's always in bunches. bunches. Yes. Now, let's get back to this word now, what we were reading. That's a very good, interesting point, brother. Yeah. Yes, it's very important. Yeah. You know, Jesus is covering that here. Okay. Now he says, This is my commandment that you love one another as I love you. So that's what he says. The wine grower, the wine, and the branches, in the branches, the fruits are all, we are all together in it. So he's talking about two kinds of abiding now. We have to abide with the wine, God himself. Okay. That's very clear. Then we have to abide with each other too. Yes. With everybody else too. And that's the beauty of the wine and the branches. You know, this is something that came to me when I was reflecting on this. I was preparing a separate talk on wine and branches, a normal talk, about one and a half hours talk. Okay. So that's when this really, I had picked the picture of this to just put it on the screen. And that's when I got a beautiful revelation. Why the branches? You can see them together. Right. So right. That's together. So love one another in yes. union, in union. So abiding God means we have to be abiding in each other too. Right. And Jesus is telling that this is my commandment that you love one another as I've loved you. Look, love of God. He's allowing us to abide in him. Mm. And he says, you allow others to abide in you. When I say abide in union, right, right. in union, that's what the grapes makes it very different here. He could have used an olive. He could have used a you know, fig, anything for that matter. That's a very beautiful that's a reason point. For that. That. Well, yeah, very beautiful point about the grapes and uh, Christians abiding together. Yes, together, together in a bunch. We are in a bunch. We are not yes. alone. That's yes. the church itself, union together. Yes. yes. The entire thing is formed here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's go on to the next one. It's now interesting here. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for his one friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Okay. Let's read the next words also. I did not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I've called you friends. Okay. Jude, can I take a small detour here? Sure, brother. Because this chapter, as I told you, is about relationship. We already saw the relationship between God, Jesus, and us as the wine, the wine grower and the branches. Yes, now, yes. now he's bringing another relationship into focus now. Friends, friends, a very important relationship with God as a friend. You know, we all sing this beautiful song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus Christ. No? Yes, yes, yes. 
Dude, shall I, if you permit me, shall I go out of this chapter into a little bit about the friendship of Jesus Christ? Absolutely. We all want to be friends with Jesus. Yes. <laughs> so let's learn a little bit about it. Then we'll come back to John 15. Because, you know, as I was telling about the wine, I took time yesterday to uh, explain about the wine and the branches. Because that's a relationship with God. Similarly, let us spend some time on this friends of God, friendship with God. Okay, Friendship with Jesus Christ. Let me call it this way. A few things let me tell you about it. Then let's try to see how am I a friend of God. Let's try to examine a bit. I know it's going a little outside the chapter of John, but let's think. You know, friendship is most valued when you lose it only. Only when you lose a friendship, you don't know the value of it. Okay. Now, love of God is often compared to a love of a friend in the Bible. For example, if you take Jeremiah 31.3. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Some translation use the word, I have continued my friendship with you. Mm -hmm. That's why I put this. Because RSV, which I use, says faithfulness. There are other translations which use, I have continued my friendship with you. So love of God is compared to a love of a friend. Here Jesus said, let love abide in you. Therefore, we need to understand our relationship with God as the wine grower, wine and the branches, then as friends together, friends together. It's very important to understand this. You know, real love of God, giving up life. It says, that's what Jesus said in John 15, 12. No? Real friendship is giving up one's life, giving up one's life. And Jesus did that. John 3.16, you know, God so loved the world that he gave us only some. So friendship is giving up one's life for one. And yes. Jesus is the only one who has given up his life for you and me. Yes. Therefore, there's only one friend for you and me, Jesus Christ. Only through the friendship with Jesus Christ can I develop a friendship with others. For example, if Jude and I have to become friends, nothing wrong in that. Is there anything wrong, Jude? No. But then, if I want my friendship with Jude Fernandez to be meaningful, it should be rooted through the friendship of God. Right. right. Now, let me explain this to you. Let's take point A, Raghu. Okay? Point B is Jude Fernandez. We both are good friends. But what happens normally in good friends? Sometimes problems happen. Yes? Misunderstandings. Yes. Why? And not because anybody is wrong. Because I, as a point here, Raghu, I have my own weaknesses and my own ideas. Point B, Jude has his own ideas and own weaknesses. Right. With our own indifferences, I'm trying to unite with another person who has his own indifferences. Right. Therefore, problems are bound to become here. Right. But this friendship itself is not wrong. But what happens is we are forgetting a point C here, Christ. So... I can have a friendship with Jude through the friendship of God. It's a triangle. You mm -hmm. get it? Raghu, friendship with Jesus Christ. And through the friendship of Jesus Christ, a friendship with Jude. Then what happens? All the shortcomings of mine. For example, Jude is expecting certain things from me uh, from in this friendship. But I lack that. But I have something which he does not want. So what happens? When I root this friendship through the friendship of Christ, yes. Christ filters away everything that is not good for this friendship. And whatever is necessary is added by Jesus Christ through his merits and that is flowing on to Jude now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Therefore, our friendship becomes perfect. This example normally I use for family life, husband yeah. and wife. I but today I use it for yeah. friendship. <laughs> Brother Raghu, can you repeat that? Please? Okay, sure. I'll do that. Yeah. Thank Look, you. Point A. Understand. Can you do it with husband and wife also, please? Better understand. The same thing you apply to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very you, you, <laughs> okay, Sandra. Sandra, I'll do it with the husband and wife only. Okay. But you can apply that to friendship also. Okay. Yeah, Any relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For example, uh, Sandra, can you unmute for a few minutes? Okay. Oh my God, brother, no! Don't no. worry, don't worry, don't worry. So, what's your husband? <laughs> are, are, are you married? <laughs> are you yeah, married? Yeah, yeah. What's your husband's name? Ruben. Okay, don't worry. Only an example. 
So Sandra, wow. you are trying to love your husband, Ruben. And nothing wrong in that. You're married only for that. And Ruben is trying to love Sandra, which is what happens in any marriage. Okay. But the problem is, Sandra, your heart is not created to love your husband, Ruben. Do you know that? She's thinking maybe it's too late. <laughs> Our hearts are created only for the love of God. Friendship mm. with God. Mm. Therefore, what happens? I'm just making it very simple now. Okay. Mm. Normally, I explain in detail. Now, what happens? Because why? Not because there's something wrong with Sandra or with Ruben. No. We are two individual human beings with our own shortcomings and failures or whatever it is. So, with all your negativeness, you're trying to love your husband, Ruben. And therefore, it's going to be a problem. And he, with all his shortcomings, is going to love Sandra. Therefore, there are bound to be problems, whether it is husband and wife or two friends. You can apply it anyway. So what happens? There is a center point called Christ C, point C, Christ. So Sandra, you get, you love Christ first. Or Jude, you develop a friendship with Christ first. And through the love of God, you love your husband, Reuben. And through the friendship of Christ, you try to have a friendship with Ramu. So what happens? All the shortcomings in you, Sandra, is filtered away by Christ. And what flows onto your husband, Reuben, is pure love. Vice versa too. Today, if we don't have this relationship with Christ as a friend, as a husband, what happens? There is bound to be problems, whether it's a husband-wife relationship or a two-friends relationship. This is why this point C Christ, friendship with Christ or a relationship with Christ is paramount in any relationship. Because why, Sandra, Jude, let me tell you, our hearts are created only for the love of God, only for a friendship with Christ and only in the love of God and only in the friendship of Christ can a human's heart find contentment in nothing else, nothing else. It is through the love of God. It is through the friendship of Christ. Every other relationship should flow in. That is why many of us do not understand the importance of a friendship with Christ or relationship with Christ. Get the Sandra now? Ah, ah, brother. Yes. Thank you. Like, uh, reminded of that Psalm, uh, how beautiful it is when brothers dwell in. Yeah, 134, Psalm 134, 133, sorry, 133. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So this is what it is. Now moving on on friendship. Now, true friendship is very important. Proverbs 18, 24 talks about true friendship. It says, some friends play at friendship, but a true friend sticks closer than one nearest kin. That's what a true friendship is. And Jesus is calling you and me friends. Remember that. All this applies to the friendship of Christ. Now, Friendship of the world different from the friendship of God. James 4.4 4 tells that adulterers do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity to God. Therefore, who wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Therefore, I cannot have friendship to the world. When I say friendship to the world, we are not talking about people of the world. We are talking about the things of the world. I cannot have a friendship to the standards of the world and claim to be a friend of God. And Jesus is saying, you are my friends. That means what? He wants us to detach from the friendship of the world. That's what John 15 is important. He wants us to detach from the friendship of the world. Very important, my dear friends. You know, Bible, there are many friendships in the Bible. Can you name a few, Jude? David and Jonathan. Ah, Job had three friends first. Let's go with Job first. Anyway, we know that Job 2.11, three friends. But when trouble came, what happened? They started accusing Job. Then we also have the beautiful example of David and Jonathan. Yes, true, very true. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 and 3. When David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was bound to the soul of David. Oh, what a beautiful thing. Look at this. Yes. That's a wonderful friendship here. Soul is bound, becomes one, becomes one. A beautiful friendship. It's very important. 
Today we have many friends in the world, but this. But let's also remember all friendships are very temporary. Only one friend is a true friend of us. That is Jesus Christ. Is Jesus your friend today? My dear friends, don't have to answer me. Examine. Friendship with God lost due to original sin. Yes, we know that. Restored through Jesus Christ. Therefore, friendship with God is restored through Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus said in John 15. One thing we need to be good. We, may, we were made for friendship with God, my dear friends. God does not want just, uh, just us to know him. He wants us to have an experience of friendship. You know, some people know about Christ. Everybody in the world, almost everybody in the world knows about Christ. But how many people know Christ? And out of that, how many people experience the friendship of Christ? Very less, very less. Today, we have to change. If we really understand and meditate on John 15, one thing I would tell you, my dear friends, is to develop that friendship with Christ. Very important here. Okay, uh, let's uh, click, uh, leave this now. Sounds pretty well, Fudin says. Yes. Yeah, I can. On that friendship, that, that's something which I also wanted to just. Ah, yes, go ahead, June. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, you you talked of uh, you know verse seven. I think if you ask for whatever you oh. ask will be done. Now um, uh, I often reflect on myself. So most of my asks are about things that I want God to give, mm. uh, blessings of the world. Yeah. But uh, I realize I don't ask so much for His friendship, the gift of Himself. And, uh, and I, I was relating it back to the Psalms. It says, God is my portion. Uh, he, he is my portion. And that's, that's all I need. Okay, Jude, let me uh, no, add on to what you said. Have you had any good friends, very good friend in your childhood days? School yes, days? Yes. When you go to his house, what will you do? You're like uh, one of the members of the house there. You do whatever you want. Whatever no? you want, yes. Can you do that with everybody you go to or only with your best friend? Very, very few. Very few. few friends. Ah, okay. Now, if Jesus is your friend, the entire kingdom of God is yours. Yes. So do you want to ask for, suppose you want, your friend has a, um, say he has some good food on the table, your best friend, okay, you're in the school days. He has some nice food on the table. He has some nice clothes. He has some nice toys. He has some nice gadgets. Okay. Now, if you say you are, if you are like a member of the house, do you have access to all these things? Yes. Then you go ask him, can I want, can I have this? Can I have that? Will you ask him? You don't need to. You don't need to. Yeah. But imagine you have a friend who's not very close to you and he has all these things. What will you do? Can I borrow your toy for a day? Yeah, you'll be can hesitant. I, yeah. Can I give that the delicacy that your mom has prepared? Can you share with me? Right, right. That's what we are doing, no? Right. Lord, can you give me a little of this? Can you give me a little healing today? Mm. Lord, can you give me a little deliverance today? That right. means we are not developed that friendship with Jesus Christ. That's what, what you said makes sense now. John 15, 7, no? Right, right. Ask for that friendship. I'll tell you a little more about the friendship. Okay, we didn't read this, no? Psalm 25, 14. The friendship of the Lord is those who fear him. When we say fear, it's a reverential fear. Right. Not that scared of him. And he makes his covenant known to them. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. He makes his covenant. That means what? His entire relationship known to us. Or rather, we have access to his covenant. Hmm. Okay. So moving further. Five people in the Bible were called a friend of God. I'm not saying others were not friends of God. Okay? Five people are specifically mentioned. At least five. I know that. Maybe there could be more. Abraham. Three times in the Bible, Abraham is called a friend of God. James 2.23, 2 Chronicles 27, Isaiah 41.8. Now, let's. this is only a, a spiritual lesson for us. Why was Abraham called a friend of God? What was the quality in Abraham that made God call him a friend? So if I can learn the qualities, God will call me also a friend. Okay, so we look at the quality of Abraham today. 
the scriptures was fulfilled that says abraham believed god and reckoned him as and he was called a friend of god we know that okay now reason 100% obedience that was the greatest virtue of abraham 100% obedience i'll give you three examples i will not read it genesis 12:1 lord told him to leave everything and go to the promised land did he follow that 100% yes yes then we have the a child at 75 years old he said you'll have a child did abraham believe that 100% yes though his wife sarah did not believe he believed it yes yes then when god told him to sacrifice isaac did he believe god that was the biggest one yes Absolutely. why was the biggest one because he went and told his servants we will go and we will come back mm-hmm. because god told him it is through isaac you love generations no so he knew mm-hmm. that he'll come back with isaac Mm-hmm. See, that's a hundred percent obedience. In spite of he obeyed whatever God told him. So the first one I will tell you, my dear friends, if we need to be called friends of God, we must have hundred percent obedience to God. Clear? The and second God. person to be called a friend in the Bible. Just linked to that obedience is probably the faith also. When I have hundred percent ah, faith, I because can... of obedience, faith was given to him. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah okay we can put it either way yeah. but faith will keep it for somebody else also no <laughs> yeah there could be multiple virtues i'm not saying yeah. no yeah. okay the second person to be called a friend of god jacob jacob isaiah 41:8 but you israel my servant jacob whom i have chosen the offspring of abraham my friend so jacob is also called as a friend of god reason for that always sought the blessings of god He always was longing for the blessing of God. Remember that beautiful incident in Genesis thirty-two. He fought with God for the blessing. Yes. I'm not explaining those points just to make us understand what is the virtue that we can learn. So I become a friend of God when I seek His blessings always. When I say blessing, we are not talking about the material blessings alone. His grace in our life, His intervention in our life. The third person to be called a friend of God. Okay, let's read this. third person jude moses moses, moses. exodus 33:11 thus the lord used to speak to moses face to face as one speaks to a friend he's addressed as a friend here what was the virtue of moses one biggest virtue of moses humility always walk with god yeah walk with god He said, "No, not if you do not go, I will not go. If yes, you go with yes, me, I will go." Yes, yes. Let's uh, close all this after this uh, burning bush experience. Okay. Right, right. So that's it. So if I need to be called a friend of God, I should be able to walk in the ways of God. When you say walk with God, means walk in His ways. Yes, yes. Walk according to His teachings. Live according to His teachings. That is walking in His ways. Mm-hmm. My dear f- friends, I am telling you how to become a friend of God. okay so make a note of these points only i am not we are not going detail into this the fourth person to be called a friend david david was actually not called a friend in the bible i am not saying he is not a friend but the word is not given to him as friend okay. lazarus in the new testament lazarus in the new testament john 11 11 after he told our friend lazarus has fallen asleep and we to tell it wake him up lazarus was called a friend. friend of god reason reason faith mm-hmm. faith of this family look how much faith they had they said lord if you have been there when jesus is here calling him lord if you have been there we know that we know lord even now if you pray god will raise him up remember we all heard all this in john chapter 11 yes i'm not saying others did not have faith but what i'm saying look at this this was one of the biggest virtue of this family they had a insha- unshakable faith in christ abraham also had not saying that but yeah look at that's the reason so our faith in god an unshakable undivided faith in god will earn the friendship of god fifth person to be called a friend john john where did jesus call him a friend i have not come across it no okay <laughs> anybody any guesses everybody is silent mount tabor 
Mount Tabor is not called a friend. No, no, I'm no, asking no, no. who's called so a friend taken... of God. No, 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 I'm not talking who they can and all. I'm asking who was called as a friend. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, no. I'll tell you who was called a friend. Judas. Judas. This is a googly brother. Yeah, it's a googly. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Matthew 26, 15. Jesus said, a friend, do what we are here to do. Jesus said that, no? Yes. yes. When Judas came, to friend, do what you have to do. Jesus is calling Judas a friend. Wow. So let's leave it in the name of Judas now. Why did Jesus call him a friend? Mm -hmm. Let's look at it that way now. Reason. Luke 6, 27. I say to you, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. That's true friendship. Jesus is showing what true good friendship is here by calling Judas, the one who was betraying him right at the moment of betrayal. He is calling Judas his friend. How many of us can do that? Very, very tough. At the moment of betrayal. Huh? Mm. He was the fifth person who was called. There could be more. I'm not saying that's all, but this is what I found out. A direct calling is a friend. Okay. As a group, they can be referred as friends. All that is fine. But there could be one or two more also. Probably you can add on. I'm not sure about it. But look at this. Everybody, there was a reason. Now, now one of the ways I can be called learning from Judas is by when I'm ready to love my enemies too, I will be called a friend of God. Hmm. And you, just for the sake of Sandra, when I'm able to love my husband or wife too, I will be called a friend of Jesus. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a very profound lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nothing personal, Sandra. It's just you know, it's only a humorous reference I gave. That's all. <laughs> that nice one. <laughs> okay. That's that's it. That's what that's very important for us. That's very important. So five points I've given you. Five, I think. Number one, Abraham is obedience. obedience. Number two, Jacob is sought the uh, grace of God, a blessing of God. Number three, Moses. Always walk with God. God. Number four, Lazarus. Faith. faith. Number five, Judas. Not looking at Judas, looking at Jesus. Love for your enemies. Okay, now very quickly I'll give you something else. John the Baptist called Jesus as his friend. Other way around. John 3, 29, he says, he's calling Jesus as his friend. Jesus did not call John his friend, but John the Baptist called Jesus as his friend. Okay, that's fine. Now, John 3.30, okay, this is again John's thing. I won't go into this now. It's not needed. Okay, five ways how we can grow in our friendship with God. So we'll cover this Jude today, okay? Sure. sure. Then we will continue with 15 tomorrow. John 15, after that, there's not much to learn, okay? So we'll com complete John 15 tomorrow and start 16 also tomorrow, okay? Can we lay this five ways quickly? How yes, we can grow in our friendship with God. Since we are talking about the Jesus calling us friend, it's our responsibility. Friendship is two ways. You know, both the friends should be in agreement, no? Both the person. Then only a friendship exists. Yes. So I cannot leave everything to Jesus Christ. Though he's calling me a friend, as a friend, I have to respond to this call of friendship. I have to respond to the call of friendship. I'll give you five ways in which we can grow. Five simple ways I'm telling, okay? Number one, spend time in the presence of God. Spend time in the presence of God. Exodus 33, 11. Thus, Lord used to speak to Moses face to face. That means what? If God is speaking to Moses face to face as a friend, that means Moses spent time in the presence of God. He could, so recognize, spend, he could recognize the voice of God also. Yes, because he spent time there. Today, if we need to evolve in our friendship with God, we need to spend time with God. Sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Or if you have no access to it, sit in front of an icon or a crucifix and spend time with him. Spend time with him. Very important. I'm just giving you a simple point. Huh? Not going to explain all these things. Develop a reverential fear to him. When we say reverential fear, Loving God and doing what you want to do, that's a reverential fear. Psalm 25, 14. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. 
Therefore, we need to develop a reverential fear for God. What is reverential fear? I've already explained this. Yeah, I've already explained this in our uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit talk. Yeah. But just to mention to people who might not have heard it, you know, when we say a reverential fear, we do things that are pleasing to God. Everything that is pleasing to Him, we will do it. That's called as a reverential fear. So develop a reverential fear to God if you want to evolve in this friendship. We may think how we can rever a friend. Friend means how I can, no, I cannot rever Jude, no? He's my friend, I have to talk to him. No, no, it's possible. Think about this way. Imagine what is like make a friend with a king. Okay, Jude, suppose the prime minister of a country is your friend. That's an example, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's an example. What do you do now? So I imagine like in, in you'll have two uh, ways of dealing. Of course, you will uh, uh, maybe one to one, you'll have a friendship, which is like like a normal friend, a good friend. But and again, the, you know, you the respect have, as a yes. prime minister, you'll give him. Yes. 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 So that's what now we may think, how can I rever a friend? Suppose the king is your friend. We need to love him as a friend, but the reverence, the respect of a king, we need to give it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But that's how we have to do God. As a friend, I can love him, but as a God, I have to give him the reverence too. Yes. So that's how, you know, revering a friend is also possible when you imagine it this way. That's why I put this. Because, this. you know, uh, one minute, this yes. last point I added because in one of the um, youth retreat, youth means I was from a uh, 9th standard to 12th standard, okay. I was giving a retreat. I was talking on friendship because I also, of course, I included the false friendship and the problems of friendship in that. There, when I brought this point, one boy asked me, how can I rever my friend? That's when I you know, got this point added on to that. <laughs> yeah, Jude, go ahead. Yeah, uh, there's this, um, uh, I recently came across some of my, one of my cousins saying that, you know, the, um, God in the Old Testament and God in the New Testament. And uh, Jesus reversed the image of God in the Old Testament from the wrathful God, God of anger and punishment to God who's only loving and only, only uh, you know, a God who's a friend. And I think there's a heresy uh, uh, on these lines also where people believe that, uh, uh, you know, the, the image of God has changed. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus came to change the image of God from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And mm -hmm. he's only loving and the concept of fear and punishment and all those things are, uh, you know, forgot or you know, discarded. I think there's a heresy on this. And I think lots of people uh, fall into this trap also that it is, uh, the Christianity is all about only love. There's no much of the rules aspect and, you know, being a good person. You know, it's it's kind of more about being nice and loving and all that. So it's not so much about the fear and punishment aspect, which is there. And I'm not saying it should be there, but then that kind of a, uh, dichotomy has come into some people I've seen. That's a problem because they uh, forget this aspect of reverential fear. There. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's a problem. That's very important. Yes. There's, there's another heresy like this in the early church. Mm -hmm. uh, Nestronian heresy, Nestronian heresy is called. Where since they could not accept God as a friend, no human being, they said Jesus is not uh, human and divine. He cannot be both. Cannot That's one more heresy that was there. Anyway, we won't go into that. Yes. Nestronian heresy, it's called as, okay, whatever it is. That's a problem because, uh, as you said, in the Old Testament, God, yes, anger, all that was one of the imagination of people. But another problem was God was somebody who was far away, they far could away. not have access to him. That's why when Jesus started praying to God very intimately, calling him Father, the disciples went and asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Hmm. Why? Do you think these Jews did not know how to pray? They did. They knew. Even this fisherman knew. Imagine that the movie of Chosen. See, it was Chosen. You've seen yes, that. No? Yes, yes. They pray every time. They know good prayer. Yes. But they found that Jesus praying is very different. Intimate relationship. They taught him. And how did he teach him now? Our Father. Yes. So immediately, what did they ask? Philip asked, no, we in uh, earlier so chapter, John 14. Show, show us the, the Father. father. Yes. So he's calling God as Father. He says, show us the Father. Hmm. And he will be satisfied. I think what? So, Jesus was giving the relationship to God a different meaning. <clears throat> Not that heresy, heretical type of voicing that there's no punishment. No. When we talk about our own father, 
we fear our father when we do wrong because there is going to be a consequence somewhere there. Right. But we also know if I change and I repent and I ask sorry, he will accept me. Yes. yes. That is the relationship we had with our fathers. And the same relationship God is expecting. Not that whatever you do, he will tolerate. Mm -hmm. No. That's not the father's love. Yes. So yes. God's love is the father's love is perfect. Loving, caring, forgiving. But not accepting anything that we do. So it's another term we say, no, God does not hate a sinner. He hates the sin in us. Yes, yes. So something like that. So that doesn't mean if I'm a sinner, God loves me and he loves my sin also. No. Okay. Third point. Listen to him. Listening to him. John 15, 15, we'll be coming to that. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I've heard from my father. So another way we can evolve is by listening to him. He says he's making known. That means if I am a friend of God, he will speak to me. That means what does he expect from me? That I should listen to him. That's the third important point in evolving the friendship with God. Right. It's just as a friend would attentively listen whatever the, his friend is saying. So we need to cultivate our friendship with Jesus when he plays close attention to what he speaks. Close attention. You remember our childhood friends and all, we always listen to what our friends say. Yes. More than what our parents say. God expects the same as a friend. Fourth one, I would say, have a pure heart and speak with grace. Pure heart and speak with grace. Let's read Proverbs 22, 11 here. Those who love a pure heart and are gracious in speech will have the king as a friend. Something beautiful here. When I have a pure heart, when I speak graciously to others, lovingly to others, then the king of kings and lord of lords will say, my friend. Wow. Very true. Very true. Who would enjoy hanging out with a friend who carried purity in the hearts? Yes, my dear friends. Very important. Fifth one, last point for this. Love one another as Jesus loved and keep his commandments. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So, friendship with Jesus means loving one another and keeping his commandments. I should love everybody else. Grapes. We can remember grapes now. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bunch of grapes now. And keeping his commandments. When we do these things too, we become friends of God. We become friends of God. That's why Jesus said in John 15, 12, we have covered this. Yes. That you love one another as I have loved you. I have loved you. Okay, Jude, I think we'll stop with this today, no? Yes, brother. Maybe we'll take questions. Yeah, questions we can take. I have time. No problem. So, uh, let me just summarize it, my dear friends. As yesterday, we spoke of this beautiful relationship as the wine grower, wine and the branches. Today, the Lord is teaching us another thing in John 15. Relationship with him as friends. I've given you enough evidence from the Bible of what is friendship of God. Who are the people who are called friendship of, for friends of God? What was the quality in them that made them be known as friends of God? How we can become friends of God? How we can evolve in our friendship with God? We spoke about that. We'll come back to the other part of John 15 tomorrow. But keep this friendship in very important in mind. That's why I took a little detour in explaining about the friendship with God. Now I'm ready for questions, Joe. Yes. So questions, anybody can unmute and ask. Brother, Brother Raghu, can you please put up slide four and five for me? Thank you. Four and five means I do not know. Can you tell me what it uh, is? The last, the last two slides. That the last two slides. Okay, fine. One yes. Minute. Thank you. One minute. Just wanted to write down. The, okay, point. This, these the two verse. points. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yes. Yes. Four and five. Yes. I thought slide number four and five. <laughs> Where will I remember? I was thinking. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Take it down. Take it down. So Lovala will be uploading this also. Yeah, we will have it on the yes, YouTube yes. also. 
No, I just needed the scripture verse only. Uh, okay, from I'll, I'll listen to it? it again later. Yeah, yes. can I move to the next and, slide? And the next one, next one, yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, yes. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Vin. I want it. Thank you, brother. Okay. I just want to ask. Yesterday's video was loaded because I had missed half. No, no, I, I didn't hear your question properly. Yes. Yesterday's video. Ah, okay. I think it's not an uploaded. Jude will okay. check up with Joe's and do it today. Yesterday okay, is number thirty-eight. You. Today will be thirty-nine. Okay. Thank sure, you. Sure. Thank we'll you. Anybody for a last question? Jude is there? Yeah, he's there. <laughs> we are Jude voice today. <laughs> yeah, yes, very, very awesome. Oh, he's driving. Yeah, driving. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, brother. Relax, relax. Don't worry. Yeah, brother Raghu, very, very awesome session today. Very, very simple, but very, very huge meaning, deep meaning on friendship. Really, at this age, also we need to learn how to develop yes. our friendship with whom, where, how. Yeah. Yes. Thank uh, you. Cliff, for Clifford is asking me: Is Jeremiah a friend of God? Everybody is a friend of God. Mm. I'm not saying you know, only these people are, but I'm just using the uh, scriptures where the scripture says they are called as a friend of God. That's all. I have not come across Jeremiah being called. If he is called, yes, fine. But everybody is a friend of God. Don't worry about that. Thank you. Yes. That Thank you, brother. Thank you so about. much, brother. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. That life we did talk about David. David was a man after God's own yes. heart. Yes, 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 correct. So I'm not saying, you know, but specifically the word friend is used there. That's what I picked up. Yes. That's what I meant also. That's what I meant also. Of course, everybody is a friend of God. Yeah, imagine even Adam and Eve were like that. No, they walked yes. as friends in the garden. So, but the word friend is not used there. That's what I meant by that. That's all. Yeah. Brother, Enoch also, Enoch, Enoch. That's what I'm saying, Enoch, everybody is a friend of God. He walked with God, all that we know that. Yes. But the word friend is not used there specifically in the Bible. That's what I meant by that, that's all. Yes. That's thank you so much. Everybody is a friend of God, no doubt about that. Brother, thank you so much, brother. God bless you, brother. All the patriarchs, all the prophets were all friends of God. Yes, brother. Okay, Jude, if nothing else, shall we close with the prayer? Yes, yes. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the grace to understand, especially today as we meditate on this relationship with you as friends. You have called us friends, Lord, but we ask you grace so that we may respond to this call of friendship. As Abraham responded, as Jacob responded, as Moses responded, as the family of Lazarus responded, give us also the grace to respond to this call of friendship so that we may evolve and grow in this friendship. Continue to speak your word into our hearts and continue to give us the grace to strengthen our relationship with you. May we be the branches always united to you and may we be united to one another as the bunch of grapes. May I unite with every fellow human being. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. 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 Thank you very much, brother. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. Have a great evening.